Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University. For the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through the technology maturation and risk reduction phase of the defense acquisition system. This is the second phase. Recall that in the first phase, material solution analysis, we picked what we thought was the best technology to go forward with and mature. And now that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to mature that technology through competitive prototyping to reduce the overall risk on the program. We're going to enter this at milestone A, and to do that, we need that technology to have been picked with an analysis of alternatives in the previous phase. We also need our initial program documentation and full funding in the future year's defense program. Major activity, again, reducing risk through competitive prototyping. And we're also going to do some good trade-off analysis in terms of cost and performance. So that as talking to our warfighters here and as they put together their draft CDD and their CDD, uh, before they put that in stone here at, at the CDD validation point, we've done some good cost performance trades and understood what the performance we're paying for is costing us and, and we've set those marks for performance at the right level. We also need full funding, um, both at Milestone A and at Milestone B, so our financial managers are going to have to stay in tune with the planning, programming, budgeting, and execution system to make sure that that happens and also make sure we're executing our funds. We'll start with program management here. They'll need to update that acquisition strategy. We're going to now know a lot more detail about our program, so we'll be able to look out into the future years, the next phases, uh, with a lot more level of detail than we did with the first acquisition strategy. We're also going to start some good proactive risk management here. We would have looked at risks, certainly, and put this in place in the previous phase. However, now we're going to have some, no kidding, metrics here that we can track that will give us a heads up if something's going wrong on the program. Two powerful tools for that are earned value management and technical performance measures. We also want to collaborate with our requirements folks at the program level to make sure that we do uh, have a say here to a certain degree in what goes into that capability development document. We want to make sure it's affordable and we want to make sure that it's doable from a technical standpoint. So we're going to ask folks within the program to get engaged on that. We also want to execute that competitive prototyping and analyze technical maturity when we get that done because we will not get out of this phase successfully at a milestone B unless we have proved that this technology works in at least a relevant environment. We also want to establish a configuration steering board, and that's for all programs, and that's going to be at a leadership level. For the bigger programs, it's going to be at DOD level, and for the smaller programs, it might be at service level, but you're going to have representatives from all of those big three decision support systems that I talked about in the overview from the financial side and PPPE, from the warfighter side and JSIDs, and from the acquisition side. And they're going to take a look within the portfolio where your requirement, your program fits in, and how affordable it is within the overall context of things. And you're also expected to have some descoping options for your program when you talk to the configuration steering board. It will meet annually, uh, at least once a year, once you establish it, which happens here at the capability development document validation. Our contracting folks are going to be real busy. They're going to be basically starting two different source selection processes in this phase. They've got to first select some sources uh, for the competitive prototyping, and they can't release their RFP for that until milestone A. Uh, so they'll conduct that source selection and get us some contractors on board for that. And they'll also be working on planning for the next source selection, which starts over here at the development RFP release decision. So in order to do that, they're going to want to release some draft RFPs or, or possibly a request for information and look at what's out there and what can be expected from our partners out there in industry. And that information will help us build a better source selection plan and a better request for proposals. We also want to manage the contract performance on those contracts for competitive prototyping that we let. And finally, when we do get this decision here to release our RFP, they're going to go ahead and conduct that source selection and get that done prior to milestone B so that as soon as we get a good milestone B decision, we can go ahead and award those contracts for the next phase. Again, like every other um, acquisition career field or lane uh, that contributes to this, they're really spending this 
particular phase getting ready for success in the next phase as well. Our financial management folks, again, need to stay in tune with the PPBE process and make sure that uh, we continue to refine the cost estimates for the program. We're going to analyze affordability of the different design alternatives before we get to that capability development document validation. We want to make sure that the requirements in there are affordable and these folks have the cost estimation expertise to help us to do that. They're also going to manage the funds execution and there's going to be a lot going on uh, so they need to make sure that things get obligated on time and, and that the funds are expended according to our plans. Let's switch gears here to the technical side now in systems engineering. You might imagine if we're doing competitive prototyping and a lot of analysis on that, that the systems engineers are very involved. Uh, they want to establish cost performance relationships early on and see how does performance vary, uh, cost vary, I should say, as a, as a function of performance and, and where are those knees of the curve and that kind of thing where, where we really want to kind of stop paying uh, because we're not getting much more for the dollar that we're putting into it. We also want to assess technical maturity and manage the technical risk on the program and, and these are the folks that are going to help with the technical performance measure tracking uh, for the program management team. We also want to plan how we're going to do the next phase. We want to get ready for engineering and manufacturing development so how are we going to do the technical approach there and that involves an update of the systems engineering plan. We're going to conduct that preliminary design review prior to getting out of this phase and that establishes that system architecture and the external and internal interfaces that we really need to understand very well on the program. Another technical area is test and evaluation. Now, we're going to be doing quite a bit in terms of demonstrating this technology of the prototypes and that kind of thing, so we've got to have a good rock solid uh, team to do that. They're going to conduct component and subsystem development mental testing on these prototypes and modeling and simulation in conjunction with that and the data that they get from the actual tests will help the models and simulations get better. They'll need to update the test and evaluation master plan. Again, we'll know more now, so looking into the future we can put more details into that and how we're going to test the system in the next phase and then the phase after that when we actually get to initial operational test and evaluation. And if possible, we want to conduct some early operational assessments. Let's go ahead and get some more fighters and get them in and, and see what, what their opinions are of what the technology is that we have right now and what its weaknesses and strengths are and, and it's always good to get that feedback early so you want to plan for those early operational assessments as well. Software development can really help us here uh, by defining our software architecture early and making sure that uh, we've identified cost drivers again before we get to the capability development document validation we want to understand uh, those requirements from a software standpoint, make sure that we haven't uh, signed up for anything there that's just undoable or unaffordable. Also, we want to implement that program protection plan and update that uh, for milestone B and make sure that we're keeping everything on the program away from any cyber attacks or intrusion. We should have established in this phase, or we should establish in this phase, some software metrics that we can then track and help us keep track of whether we have any software risks that are rearing their heads up at this point that we need to deal with. Production quality and manufacturing here also has quite a bit to do. We want to evaluate each of these prototypes, whether they be system level or they be component level prototypes for manufacturability. What are the materials that we're using? What are the processes that we're going to have to use? Is it an unbelievably long process where we might need long lead items and that kind of thing? Uh, we also want to assess alternative production methods. If we look at something, we see that it's a problem. Maybe there's some other ways we could do this and make it better. Maybe there's some design for producibility uh, that we can do and we can influence as we go through this particular phase. We also want to demonstrate any key processes that are identified. So if there's one or two things that we know that are absolutely essential, for manufacturing, it would be a very good idea to demonstrate those as early as this phase. We also want to look at affordability like all the other lanes that we've talked about and make sure that the production processes as we go forward and the actual uh, production cost of the systems is going to be affordable. And last but not least, our life cycle logisticians uh, have to be engaged as well in this particular phase. They need to evaluate the supportability of each of these prototypes that, that comes out 
and also track support metrics. We can start getting some feedback now through the testing that we're doing on how we're doing uh, on reliability of different components and subsystems and that kind of thing. It's never too early to start gathering that data. We also want to establish the reliability growth curves and the reliability and maintainability cost rationale. And that's going to be something that's going to follow us through the rest of the program, making sure that we meet our goals in those areas so we meet the overall user requirements. We want to demonstrate any key support technologies, just like the manufacturing technologies. Just if there's something that we feel is risky, this is the time to knock that risk out here in technology maturation and risk reduction. So we want to demonstrate anything that we think is, is cutting edge. And we want to refine that life cycle sustainment plan that we originally put together before Milestone A so that we make sure that we have a better plan going forward when we hit Milestone B. So that was a quick walkthrough of technology maturation and risk reduction. I hope you'll take a, advantage of the other phase-by-phase uh, -phase videos that we have for you. I hope you'll also take advantage of all of the good online resources that we have, including the Defense Acquisition Guidebook. There will be a link for that at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.